ready. Are we? Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. And by the way, I don't use a lot of O-arm. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I heard that comment. I actually do use the O-arm. We bought an O-arm uh, many years ago, and we used it as a coat rack. And so uh, I, I started to use it. Actually, what happened was is we, we, we've gotten a lot of adult uh, scoliosis patients. And when you get an adult scoliosis patient, they have this huge fusion mass. And they're very hard. Uh, they're they're hard to figure out exactly where to put the screws, because we used to do foraminotomies. It took forever. You get down there, you invariably get a CSF leak, or you could put hooks into the fusion mass, which kind of didn't hold as well as uh, pedicle screws. So with the O arm, I found out a couple things. Is if you have an O arm, you have to use it because you have to have a team, and everyone on the team has to use it. There's nothing worse than having an instrument and using it once a year because when you use it, no one knows how to do everything, it's out of sync, and so it becomes a disaster. So I usually try to do once a week, I try to do a navigated case. Uh, I do a lot of adult scoliosis, and I found it's, it's helpful for that. So really quickly, just to go through a navigation system, and they're all fairly similar. The best, the best known one is obviously the O-arm, uh, and what happens is, is essentially you have this thing over here is our CAT scanner. Looks just like a CAT scanner that you would see, see down in the CT room. The difference is, is what we're gonna do is, and if you're a neurosurgeon, you see with the heads, it's a very similar system. You have a navigation system here, which serves as a satellite. So this is your fixed system. You get a CAT scan, and it fills out to, an, to a computer system that registers everything into space, and then you circle everything in, and it uses this information and, and remembers it. So we're just gonna really quickly show how you, how you get it done. There's a couple things in, in why you have to use it regularly, because you have to know where you're gonna put your image guidance system, because there's nothing more frustrating than knocking it with your hand and having all your information come off. So what we usually do is we do the whole dissection out ahead of time, uh, retractors in or out. Once everything's completely done, we always put all our screws in. You do not manipulate the spine until after you got all your screws in. So here we have our dissections all done. Now we usually take the system and I drape it with real drapes and then we bring the O-arm in. We've done it many different ways with draping the system. Um, it seems to be less, more user friendly if you, if you do it this way, you have less chance of uh, hitting the spine. So the O-arm you can see closes very nicely. It comes down. Once you get a team to do this, it, it takes about 20 minutes probably to do the whole spin. The first couple times I've done it, it took a couple hours because invariably you did something wrong. So here we go, the O-arm. What you do is you do AP and lateral to make sure you're over the right area. And in this, in this case, we decided to do a pelvic, pelvic screw. So we did O-arms of, uh, of the pelvis. So we just completed that. That was the world's fastest spin. You all right? So then we take it out of the system. And it's kind of nice doing it this way because uh, you, if you usually put a drape over the whole thing, I actually think you have more breaks in sterility with people trying to open it up and close it up. So then we pull the OR machine out. And the first thing you do with all the navigation systems is make sure well, the first thing you do, I guess, is take the drapes off. So we take our drapes off. And the first thing you do is you go, God, I hope I put the, uh, the, uh, the marker in, in a place I won't hit it. What we try to do is we say, okay, let's make sure I am in the right place. Because, again, you got to remember is uh, the system's only as smart as the person using it. I work with a couple people, and they have a real hard time using navigation because they push the body in when they put pedicle screws in. So when you push the body down, you lose your reference point, and so things are off. So what you have to be is very careful and lay the instrumentation exactly where you want it. And you can see, I think you guys see the image right now. We have a beautiful picture of the, the pelvis, very nicely done. And so with an S2 screw is, uh, the way I do my S2 screws is, we dissect everything out, and you find the S1 and the S2 foramen. And once you find your S1 and S2 foramen, and you can see right here, I am now in the S1 foramen, and down here is the S2 foramen. Um, do you normally, so just backtrack for a second. So you used um, 
before you place any instrumentation, you double check where you're at. Correct. Okay. So, for, so example, in this patient, I'd say, okay, I want to know, make sure that I am on the S1, top of the S1 spinous process. So here you go. Here you can say, I know just from my surgical anatomy that this should be the S1 spinous process. So when you see the computer screen, you can see the point, the blue tip is this marker. Now each marker is, uh, is verified ahead of time because you're going to notice that there are different instrumentations. This probe here is a different length than this probe. And so they're all reference framed off. One of the other tricks just, just to um, remember is you can't, the computer is only as smart as you are. So when you're passing different instrumentations in, it tries to read different uh, systems and it gets confused. So you always have to make sure you're only using one image guidance system and hide the other ones while you're here. So again, uh, I pretty much know where I am. This is your S1 foramen. You can see that I'm in the S1 foramen. So how about putting an ALAR screw for us very quickly? We have three minutes. All right, ready? <laughs> so I mark and I go, okay, what's my ideal trajectory? That looks pretty dang good. So I take my screw. Then I would use my AW and I would say, okay, here's my AW, do I like my trajectory? And I would just go right down. And you can see as I'm feeling my way down, and I can tell you, you know, you still use all your own tricks. I can feel I'm hitting the SI, the, uh, I, I, can, I can feel myself hitting this sclerotic bone or the cortical bone. And you can see I'm going now through to your SI joint right here. Tapping down. And this is probably farther than I would do. I usually do about a 70 to 85 millimeter screw. And this one I went all the way up to 90. Again, you would check and you'd say, just like you normally do, do I like it? Does everything feel good? And I can tell you, everything feels like bone all the way across. I'm very happy. I think I'm in the hip. And then I would take my screw and then it, these systems are kind of nice because everything's image guidance. And so you can watch your resident do it and kind of not have as much angina. This one, for some reason, isn't getting... Oh, do we not verify this? Are you really there for the registration? The residents tell me that you, you're nowhere to be found. I don't think this one was registered, but I'll just... I'm going to tap it. And you could. And here you are, you're up to an 85 millimeter screw. I don't know if we have it. And again, after each tap, you feel it. And so what I do is I do it my traditional ways, but I just use the image guidance just to check. So I feel in here, and there's bone everywhere, going all the way down, and I'm actually all the way up to the anterior iliac spine and you can I don't know if you can hear but there's definitely bone down at the opposite end or it's a table and then put your screw in okay so Jim uh, thank you so much for the OR demonstration there mm -hmm.